You know who kept our rights here in the United States for stevia? First time I'm ever going to honor and acknowledge somebody I don't usually do. The soda industry. Wow. Soda industry. Soda industry stepped in a couple of days before you were going to lose your right to have a sugar substitute that's legitimate and healthy for you called stevia and said, you can't outlaw this because we want to use it in what? Soda. So I'm not going to have you give them a hand, but anyway, give them a nod. <laughs> now here's the big bummer because look at when I joined the team of Hippocrates back in the 70s, we were big advocates of all raw food, including lots of fruit. Now I was really happy because I was a sugar addict like the rest of you. I was eating so much sugar my eyes were crossed most of the time. And the reality was, it wasn't called sugar, it was called carrot juice, fructose, same as in mangoes, or beet juice. Large geographic areas of the world get their sugar from beets, remember this. And watermelons and strawberries and grapes. Somebody today, we were writing an email back as we drove here today, and they said, you know, I'm feeling weak when I don't have sugar, that, and I know you need sugar. So I wrote back and said, you have either low blood sugar or high blood sugar. And by the way, the disease you're fighting, it wouldn't be wise to take the grapes you're suggesting. You know, it's almost biblical. You know, grapes. How could grapes be bad? Jesus spoke about grapes. <laughs> you know, people equate these things like crazy. Hybridized fruit of today has an average of 30 times more sugar than the original fruit. Now, I want you to have that sink in here in the room and out there in the world. So you're eating a fruit thinking it's natural, and I'm sitting here telling you the average amount of increase in sugar is 30 times more. One time more. Two times more. Not 30%. Human pancreases have been so taxed over the last several generations due to the consumption of processed sugars, they have actually gone on strike, whereas enabling sugar to go directly into the bloodstream promoting disease. So the second problem you have is sugar in fruit is shockingly high today. It's not the original fruit. It's been high bred for hundreds and thousands of years to have more and more sugar. I'm not even touching on genetic modification, which is going to make this bizarre in the very near future. And then you have the second problem is that your ancestors four generations ago didn't eat processed sugar unless you were the elite. Any of you part of the aristocracy here? Raise your hand. We're going to ask you to leave immediately. <laughs> Not really. We even welcome the aristocracy here. But the reality is, in four generations, three generations, they ate so much sugar, this poor little organ that's supposed to regulate sugar in the body broke. And so even little, little tiny bits of sugar that you're consuming go directly into where? The bloodstream. Now, we have a name for that called blood sugar, either low blood sugar or high blood sugar, but it doesn't stop there. In the 19th century, only the aristocracy consumed processed sugar. It is estimated that these individuals consume no more than two pounds, about a kilo a year. Think about it. They'd only pull it out on Christmas or Hanukkah or a special holiday or their birthday, and they'd eat morsels and they'd lock it up. They actually had a piece of furniture in their dining area that had a lock and key on it, because they know that the help would be eating it otherwise. <laughs> I would have been in there eating it if I were the help at one point, too. Ironically, today, sugar subsidies, so governments worldwide now subsidize the sugar cartel. What kind of brothers down in Palm Beach County? Fano Jewel, brothers. You Italians. <laughs> Have the poorest members of society consuming the largest amount of sugar. So it went from the aristocracy consuming the most sugar, because of subsidies today, the poorest members among our societies worldwide consume the most sugar. Isn't that sad? And once again, the poor get shaft. <laughs> Ironically, the rest of us who have a little bit of knowledge and a little bit of money, we, we sort of know better, so we consume about 120 pounds of sugar a year. But here's a sad one. I see this quite often. Matter of fact, right here in Orlando, Florida, the home of all these entertainment parks, I'm positive that we could find thousands of children right now, this minute, putting sugar down their throat. Would anyone disagree with that? 
Matter of fact, when you go to a lot of these entertainment parks, which have a lot of merit, I think they have, it's a wonderful thing for a family to go there. But by the way, the only thing you can buy there happens to be stuff like this. You don't even have a possibility. You have to smuggle in. That's why they shake you down at the front. You have to smuggle in real food there, you know. Like into the, you go into either a theme park or you go into a movie theater, you have to wear a raincoat and put stuff in the back. <laughs> Actually, one time we, when our children were young, we were sneaking food into a movie theater and they stopped us and wouldn't let us come to the movie. We'd already paid for it. I said, isn't this crazy? Remember that? Our children, on average, consume double their weight in sugar a year. That means a 12-year-old, 100-pound, 45-kilo child literally would consume either 90 kilos or 200 pounds of sugar a year. Now think of that. What do you think that does to their brain, their body, their teeth, and the blood sugar floating around in their bloodstream invites disease and one step more for all of you pretty people out there, premature aging. In my books, I write for the academic communities. I talk about the real research that shows you high sugars, including fruit, age you prematurely. Not maybe, not possibly, absolutely, no question. That most of us, estimated 75 to 82 percent of us, do not have adequate amount of oxygen in our body at any time. So the two molecules that are required to go into the mitochondria to give fuel to the cells so that sugar can be burned are not there in approximately 80% of our cases. So this even furthers the problem and the potential for sugar to go into the bloodstream. Many, many, many more bits of sugar will be in there, highly elevating the potential for what? premature aging and disease. Now, we're going to go through this quick. Simple sugars are things like sucrose, glucose, and fructose. They're all important carbohydrates, commonly referred to as simple sugars. Sugar is found naturally in whole foods and is often added to processed foods to sweeten them and increase flavor. And that's where we want to stop. The structure, simple carbohydrates are classified as either mono saccharides or disosaccharides. Monosaccharides are the simplest form. Most basic units of carbohydrates are made up of only one sugar unit. Glucose and fructose are monosaccharides and they build blocks of sucrose and disosaccharides. Glucose, the most important monosaccharide and that's important for most people to realize that you don't need this at all. Although it's one that we get, it's one we're using all of the time, you have absolutely no need to eat this. That it happens to be in salad. Green salads have enough sugar in it. Plus the green salad carries along with it in its raw state oxygen molecules that allow this process to occur. One of the other furtherings of scientific evidence that the body was built to eat raw food is what I'm now discussing. That once you cook a food, be it a green vegetable or not, you eliminate the oxygen molecule from it, neutering the potential for these to start to feed the mitochondria. Because remember, the two last elements are no longer able to work because they don't have adequate oxygen with it. So every time you cook a food, be it an organic plant-based food or not, you're removing the oxygen potentiality. And that in and of itself create a much higher levels of sugar in all of the bloodstream. Now here's the one I want you to focus in on because this has been the good guy up until now. I'm sort of the grin reaper and in my field many of my colleagues still look at us like we have two heads but they'll eventually catch up with the sciences we have. And please heed on this one. Not that I'm a genius research scientist but I'm a nutritionist and have been so my entire adult life and after I came to this conclusion at Hippocrates more than 30 years ago and we removed fruit from the diets of people who were facing major diseases, our medical team has clearly and clearly observed that they have greatly improved versus when they continue to eat fruits. Fructose is a sugar found naturally in many fruits and vegetables and added to various beverages such as soda 
and fruit-flavored drinks. Now, people like Michael Pollan, if you've read his brilliant work, he's not a scientist, he writes more intelligently than most scientists I know, and if you want to read the most impressive thing ever written in the history of science from a non-scientist, it was in the New York Times Sunday pullout about 15 years ago. Access him, New York Times Sunday edition, and you're going to see a four-page rendition of what happened to our society once we started to put fructose, fruit sugar, inside of sodas. Now, as bad as white sugar is, whoa, when they started to put fructose into this, it made white sugar look like a good guy. However, it is very different from other sugars because it has different metabolic pathways and is not the preferred energy source of muscles or the brain. Now, let that sink in, man. We're talking about biological, biochemical science here. This is not Brian Clement's opinion. This is biological science we're talking about. This is not what the body wants. The body does not want fruit sugar. Now, here's what happens when you take it. The brain doesn't work, and the muscles don't like it. So when somebody says, I'm eating fruit and I'm running, you're not going to get much of anything from that. Or, by the way, I want to think more, so I'm going to eat a lot of sugar. If you're eating fructose, you'll actually think less. It's actually going to impair your thought patterns. Fructose is only metabolized in the liver and relies on fructinase to initiate metabolism. It is also more lipogenic or fat-producing. Now think of that. This is the only sugar, processed sugar that we eat, that acts like fat in the body. So why would it not help the brain? Why would it not help the, the muscles? What does it reduce? If this sugar, oxygen, if this sugar acts like fat in the body, you literally are now reducing oxygen by putting something that creates a fat structure in the body. Well, how come everyone else says it's good? And how come it looks natural? And how come it's on the tree? Just follow the pattern here. Unlike glucose, too, it does not cause insulin to be released or stimulate production of leptin, a key hormone for regulating energy intake and expenditure. These factors raise concerns about chronically high intake of dietary fructose because it appears to behave more like fat in the body than like other carbohydrates. Volumes of scientific data show that fructose precipitates disease and premature aging more than any other source of sugar. Now, isn't it sad that I have to sit here in the real truth about health conference and tell you this, and nine out of ten health authorities are going to tell you that I'm wrong? Sucrose is commonly known as table sugar. How many of us got a lot of that? I mean, in our family, one thing we knew is watermelons and cantaloupe and honeydew melons were not sweet enough. On the top of melons, we would actually pour about a half a kilo of what? Sugar. Think of that. Now when I eat a watermelon, my teeth throb, it's so sweet. I used to dip it into sugar. Just like lobster, you used to dip into butter. It wasn't fat enough. You know? 